Way down yonder in the paw paw patch, picking up paw paws, put them in your pocket. Picking up paw paws, put them in your pocket. Picking up paw paws, put them in your pocket. Way down yonder in the paw paw patch. In the mid 60s, when I was very much younger than I am now, I read Stalking the Wild Asparagus by Ewell Gibbons. I wanted to try everything he described, like the intriguing fruit from the pawpaw tree, which I'd never seen. Several years later, we moved near Smith College, whose campus was, and still is, full of unusual plants and trees. Then, one autumn day in the early 1990s, I discovered an impressive tree. Underneath it was a bunch of large fruits, plus others hidden high up among the leaves. Since I'd memorized Ewell's description of pawpaw fruits, I realized I'd found some fully ripe ones and finally had my first taste of this elusive fruit. Wow! It was like eating a portable juicy custard. I revisited this tree for several years until it was removed to make way for a new building. I was upset and saddened. Now, in our area of Massachusetts, pawpaws may become more widespread as people can purchase young trees from Triple Brook Farm in Southampton, whose owner, Stephen Breyer, sells many unusual plants. Or they can contact Abby White of White's Fields Farm in Hardwick, who grows and sells pawpaw fruits. Here's more information about this fascinating tree. Pawpaw, that's a funny name, isn't it? It's the only member of a tropical plant family that grows in the U.S. Unlike its relatives, it's able to thrive and tolerate cold weather. Usually these native trees grow in patches and are found in moist areas with rich soil. They're more common in the mid-Atlantic states and Appalachia. Papayas might be confused with pawpaws because papayas are sometimes called pawpaws, but these two fruits aren't related. Papayas have orange flesh with many small seeds, whereas pawpaws have yellow flesh with fewer large seeds. In late winter, pawpaw leaf and flower buds begin to swell. Their dark brown coverings are soft and velvety. The terminal leaf reminds me of an overly long fingernail. Flowers emerge in early May before leaves appear. These floral bells hang on short stems from the twigs, like living Christmas ornaments. They have three outer petals and three inner ones. Even though they may resemble crimson roses, flowers certainly don't smell like them. Once they turn from green to maroon, their odor intensifies. Some say their strong fragrance resembles rotting meat, which is a beacon for flies and beetles who act as their prime pollinators. Flowers have both male and female parts. The female pistils mature before the male stamens. By the time the male is ready to pollinate, the female has gone by, so males need to go to a different tree to find females. It's necessary to have several trees nearby so cross-pollination can occur. The large hanging leaves resemble flip-flops or the droopy ears of a basset hound. They appear in late spring, a good way to avoid New England's late frosts. Identification is easy. They grow alternately along the stems, have smooth edges with a pointed tip, and are enormous. Some are more than a foot long. If in doubt, crush a leaf and smell it. There's a distinct gasoline-like odor, which some find disagreeable. 
No wonder they're an ingredient in a natural insecticide. Caterpillars of zebra swallowtail butterflies feed on them exclusively. Their consumption doesn't harm the trees and makes these insects unappealing to predators. In autumn, foliage becomes a striking bright yellow, which makes trees visible from afar. Fruits are hard to overlook, as they're the largest ones found in the United States. They start developing in early June. Often several baby fruits appear together after the petals fall from the flowers. These look like little green chilies, and this a small peanut. Bigger ones may resemble hanging green potatoes. Sometimes it takes eight years before trees produce fruits. They ripen in October, are green, and two to six inches long. Look carefully to find them, as their protective leaves do a good job of hiding them. Often several fruits grow in small groups or in large clusters. If picked too early, they won't ripen. To tell when a fruit is ripe, place it between the thumb and forefinger and squeeze lightly. If soft, it's okay. When handling fruits, be gentle, as they're easily bruised. When they begin to ripen, they emit a fragrant aroma. You can leave them out at room temperature for three to six days, but longer than that, they become overripe. After their skin begins to show a few dark patches, store them in the fridge as they're perishable. They'll keep for about a week. Probably they're not sold in supermarkets because they have such a short shelf life. Before I talk about eating the fruits, I want to mention some people develop sensitivities to consuming them, more so when they're dried or cooked. Although this is rare, don't eat large quantities. Be cautious and eat them only occasionally. Remember, don't overdo. Moderation is key. The best time to eat the fruits is when their flesh is firm and before their skins turn dark brown. This fruit lineup is arranged from youngest to oldest. All okay to eat. I've put some darker ones here, as some people enjoy their caramel-like taste, although I don't. The optimal method to gather fruits is to hand-pick them off the tree. One day, they'll be hard, but the next day, they may be ripe. What that means is, if possible, check on them daily. Be prepared to compete with various animals who like the fruit too. Look under the leaves on the ground. Often you'll find fruits hiding there. These pawpaws are ready to process. Their flavor varies over time, and their taste differs from tree to tree. If you don't like the fruit from one tree, move on to another. When first ready to eat, their flesh is pale yellow and more banana-like in flavor. As they ripen more, the color deepens and their flavor intensifies. Finally, they get deep brownish yellow and have a stronger taste. When a pawpaw is cut open, you'll have to deal with the inedible seeds. There can be as many as 10 of them embedded in the flesh. They vary in size from small to large. Spit them out as you eat or save some to plant. I've used them to make one-of-a-kind necklaces. To do this, wash, dry the seeds, and drill a hole into them when they're still somewhat soft. Then combine them with other seeds or beads. Even though some people cook the fruits, I eat them raw. I scoop out the pulp, which is easier if you cut the fruit crosswise. Then you can use the skin as a cup and press on it to access the pulp. Don't eat the bitter skins and seeds. Discard them both. The pulp combines well with other ingredients, like bananas. I especially like to mix it with the pulp of Coosa dogwood fruit, 
which is available at the same time. My personal favorite is a combination of pulp and vanilla ice cream. Since pawpaw pulp can become bitter when exposed to air, freeze it to prevent it from going bad. No special preparation is required. Just remove the raw pulp from its shell. Notice I've split the pawpaws lengthwise. It doesn't matter which way you cut them. Place the flesh in ice cube trays. Their color varies because I used several different pawpaws. Once frozen, pack the cubes into freezer bags. I feel this is the optimal way to preserve the flavor of the fruits and extend the season. Then, on a dreary winter day, I can grab a pawpaw cube and mix it with other fruits in smoothies. It's a way to bring back memories of those long gone glorious autumn days. If you want more information about pawpaws, here are a few suggestions. This book by Andrew Moore and this one by Michael Judd are both informative and thorough. Ted Rugeser is a pawpaw enthusiast who, along with Abby White, inspired me to make this video. Ted has an excellent website about them. When he goes hiking, he spreads their seeds in various spots in western Massachusetts, like a modern Johnny Pawpaw seed. Neil Peterson is knowledgeable about all things pawpaw and breeds many varieties. Kentucky State University's website is full of useful information. And before I forget, there are several pawpaw festivals in autumn, like the one in Ohio that's been held for over 20 years. Who knows, now that more people are planting pawpaws in Massachusetts, maybe we'll have a pawpaw festival of our own. Where, where?